No, oh, can you believe it? <laughs> You've just said an action and your phone's ringing. Yeah. Unbelievable. Hello, and you're mate. answering it. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm just filming a podcast <laughs> at the moment. You're like, you're live on air. So, well, not live, but it's like, what are you wearing? Oh, cycling joggers. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right, mate. All right, see you later, Ed. All right, bye. I'll call you tomorrow. Bye. I should have put him on speaker. Oh, was that Ed? Is Ed my boyfriend? I noticed you answered that one. Hi, Ed. Is my hair look okay? Yeah, you look great. Oh. Great. I should have put him on speakerphone. Have we recorded that or not? Yes. We, oh, okay. All right, cool. Welcome back. We can't put that out. All right, okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay, ready? Steady. Ready. Action. Go. <laughs> that made you jump. That made you jump. <laughs> you made you me jump. <laughs> oh. Welcome back. Let me just do a professional little... That's it. That's how you do it. You just look like some really camp matador then. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, oh, hello and welcome back. Yeah, it's, um, well, it's been about... 30 seconds since we wrapped up the last one, but it's probably been a little while. Since. Brad had a quick whiz. Yeah. Brad had a big piss in my garden. Yeah. Um, over your furniture. Which I don't think that's where you asked him to wee. No. That's where we over, over your patio furniture. Smash him. Oh, and <laughs> in, in the, the hot, hot tub. tub. Brilliant. Um, right. Okay. Well, yeah, welcome back. Um, we are doing a listener um, top fives. Mm. Um, unlike previous ones mm -hmm. not the last one but um ones we've done historically we've just gone through loads and loads of different top fives that people have sent in haven't we mm -hmm. um but we thought we'd be a bit more specific and drill down into them a little bit mm. so in the last episode if you haven't listened to it go and download it um you slags um you done top five twins and it was actually more interesting than what i thought it would be because on paper it sounds fucking dreadful oh, i sound on paper Mm. I sound dreadful, but then yeah. you meet me and you're like, fucking hell, he's, a, he's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and I done um, top five festival lineups. Um, With a great, no, no, great number one. It was, um, yeah, I, my, my perfect festival lineup mm. featuring bands alive and deed. Um, so, yeah, that's um, available. So, the best thing to do is, yeah, just go and subscribe and they will just turn up for you anyway. Easiest thing to go and do is go and subscribe. Yeah. Oh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, on that little thing down there where it says subscribe, click it. Click it, you slags. Um, right. Um, you're I'm, very I'm, threatening. I'm, I'm starting today, aren't I? So I'm I'm going to start mine today um, with um, from Emma Jones. Um, thank you, Emma. Uh, oh, that's uh, that's one of the people I work with, Emma. That's oh, is it? Nick's sister. That is. All oh, right. Yep. So she'll be chuffed with this. Okay. Um, All right, Emma. That's it. Top five most embarrassing moments. Mm. You must have. Fuck me, that'd take you a long time to find five. You've, a, you've heard a lot of my mate Craig's though, haven't you? Oh yeah, he's got himself into a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a vault, yeah. and there's a lot that, I've, you know, there's ones that we talk about on, yeah, 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 and there's other yeah. ones that we, we never will, never see the light of day. But you, we haven't really heard that many. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, mate. All right. Fire well, away, just get straight in there, dive into number five. How and when was you a loser? Right, um, so I um, I reckon around the mid nineties, um, uh, I had my first kind of real girlfriend, and uh, and and was obviously very keen to impress a new girlfriend. Are you sure? And uh, and so there was. You got a name? You got a name? Uh, no, I'm not going to. Mm. I'm not going to okay. name. 
and I'm not going to name him. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, and so uh, a few of them involve her and me looking like a fucking idiot. Oh. Um, so I'll I'll start with with this one. So um, there was a venue um, in Romford. I think it was called like Ritzy's or something like that. Sounds um, about right. I can't remember what it, it might not have been called that, but um, but they used to do like a band night there mm. um, on like a Wednesday or something like that. And my band was playing, and I, I'd, I'd been seeing this girl for maybe two weeks, and just thought yeah, she's really nice. Like you know, I'm I'm gonna try and impress this one. Now mm-hmm. the bugbear in a new relationship at that point for me was. I was the singer in a band called Serious Problem. <laughs> and it generally involved me wearing, um, if you want to go over there and pick that picture off the wall, you can show it to the camera to kind of get a rough idea of what we looked like. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I would wear like a kind of white fur jacket. Am I okay there? Yeah, that's it. Um, a white fur jacket. And, and I've, yeah, got, I've got kind of... Um, green furry trousers on um, as well, uh, and and th- there was nine of us, and it was yeah, it, it was a little bit chaotic, um, but anyway, so obviously, um, new girlfriend, this is going to make all the difference. Is she going to see me jumping around on stage singing the songs with titles like um, Morning Wood? Um, <laughs> Yeah, fat bird, um, dog <laughs> shit. Uh, take that, our cunts. Yeah, it was, it yeah. was, it was highbrow, it, very, very highbrow. Mm. So I was quite anxious that I was going to potentially blow everything that night right, because okay. I thought I can't hold back from what we do on stage because it's kind of what we do and it's fun. And but hopefully, if you'll laugh and enjoy it mm-hmm. and won't just think fucking idiot, mm. like because. I reckon 80% of people that ever saw my band would have just gone, fucking idiot. Mm. Um, if I, I mean, you can go on YouTube and watch videos of it, and, and if you do, I guarantee, because I watch them now, and Serious I think, problem. fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. That has continued. That's a theme throughout your life from yeah, that point, yeah. wasn't it's, it? It's life never... goals, mate. It's life goals. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like um, quicksand. That. Yeah. No, but I, I feel that like, I've took you under my wing, young Padawan, <laughs> and, and you're, you're, you're doing well. Um, but yeah, so let me sort of try and, paint the, the, the venue for you so when you walk through the doors you had to sort of walk down like a big flight of stairs maybe sort of 20 stairs and uh and i was kind of sort of loitering around the club just kind of kept looking up the stairway to see when she was coming because mm. she, not only was she coming she was bringing all of her friends mm-hmm. and uh and i'd not met her friends before yeah so oh extra pressure yeah, yeah. And so I was a little bit kind of anxious and thinking, well, okay, well, don't, just get them in now and they're going to watch the band and hopefully have a laugh. Anyway, so as she's come down the, the stairs, I've seen, seen her walk down with her friends. I thought, right, okay, I'm going to go straight up there in my outfit, green fairy trousers, some kind Oof. of... Really, I mean, garish green. Like fairy Oscar grass, from really. Sesame Street green. Yeah, fairy. no, not that green. Like more kind of like lime fluorescent green. Um, <whistles> yeah, yeah. And so um, she's sort of seen me in this outfit, and her, her and her friends have kind of laughed. And I just thought, that's good. <laughs> They've not just kind of done that. Fuck me, like. So you... it was a fun laugh. It was an engaging no, laugh. No, not a absolutely. not a sort of like. Uh, oh, look at this. Go pop. get a cab. Yeah. Like yeah. It, they, they, they were, it was, you know, and I just thought, oh, brilliant! Like they're on board, you know. They're 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 not. She's not embarrassed, and no. and so I've kind of, as I'm walking up to them as they're coming down the stairs, mm. um, my friend, cunt from cunt and the gang, mm. um, has just run up behind me <laughs> and just because these um, <laughs> green furry trousers only had a very thin bit of elastic, just pulled my trousers and pants down. <laughs> so I'm standing there waving with my cock and balls out <laughs> to, <laughs> to my um, 
Oh, my new so girlfriend she saw and all it of that. all. Oh, and all her friends. Uh, and most of Mom Rose, it was called. Um, the club, not my cock. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that was that oh, was that, that was pretty good. Anyway. No. So, but what, what we used to do as well was when we was all, all at college, mm. like generally most of the band and and, and, and cunt. Mm. Um, and, and I keep saying this this name. I'm sure you all know who he is because he, he's he's won enough awards at Edinburgh and whatnot. But just YouTube, cunt and the gang, cunt mm. with a K, and you're in for a treat. And uh, a real treat. But when we all went to college together, we we had this this kind of game <laughs> where every time um, we would walk to like the, the canteen or the common room, you had to walk past the beauty therapy class, and that was where all the pretty girls were. Mm. And like and every time being in every hour you'd walk past there. Invariably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like and and they'd all be in there. And what we would do is always just one of us would kind of drop our guard and would forget what the thing was. And as soon as you got to the door into that class, one of you weren't concentrating and just as you walk past the door, the other lot of us that knew what was going on would generally just go whoosh. To shove that person <laughs> through the door, but not just that, you'd have to go, hello, like that, as loud <laughs> as you can. So the whole classroom jumps and turns around, oh. and all they see is some fucking freak <laughs> with long hair and shorts just going flying through a flying through their door into their classroom. Yeah, yeah. Um, he also done the hello when he pulled my trousers and pants down. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um. What uh, right? Let's not move on. Few quick questions. Right, cool. How long did you stay with this young lady? Oh, year and a half. All right. So she didn't look at it and go, Ugh. no, no, no. Put up with it. You got to grow or shower? No. Um, mm, grower. <laughs> <laughs> that yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Grow not a shower, mate. Oh, Grow not a shower. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, um, oh, amazing. And what, what about her mates then? What, 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 did, uh, what did her mates have to say about right. They were all all right. They were all all right. Truth is, the girl network, the girl network is the most impressive invent. That it's it's more, it's faster working than any like high broadband cable in terms of information exchange. Yeah. If you have sex with one girl, pretty much every girl in the world knows. Everything about that sex, uh, the girl. That's how the girl network works, especially with friends. Anyway, so if by the point where you showed your bit, flashed your bits to her, maybe later backstage you probably would have just because what you was probably planning was just to go. Well, what do you th- what do you think of that? Well, no, I right? wasn't planning on showing anyone my cock that night. I was. Yes, you was. I was just going to say hello. Nice so you'd, meet you'd have shown her your penis, but you wouldn't have shown them all your penis. But as soon as you do do that. She's going to describe your penis in infinite detail to all her mates. That's okay. what girl, girls really get into it about, you know, all the gory, all the gory details, don't they? So, doesn't matter, okay. mate. You uh, still single? Okay. Um, moving on. Um, They've all seen my penis, mate. Fast forward two weeks from uh, the gig at Monroe's. Okay. Um, so, same, same young lady. It's uh, Same young lady. It's November the 5th. Mm-hmm. And... Um, from probably 1992 to present, every Guy Fawkes night, we go around Cunt's house okay. for a firework display. Um, me and Cunt are in charge. Oh. We wear high vis and uh, no one else is allowed to like fireworks. Um, <laughs> he takes control. Um, he's right, Mr. Bronson, on the back of his um, high vis. Um, obviously, Mr. Bronson controlled Grain Jill. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and, and we do it. Anyway. So I've now took this this young lady to meet my friends uh, on Guy Fawkes night because all of my friends meet up mm-hmm. for this. So I thought, right, now is a good opportunity to introduce her to all my friends. Mm-hmm. And I think a few other my mates were there with their girlfriends, so it was like, this is a nice icebreaker for everyone, and it could all work out perfect. And uh, all the time I'm looking like the main man, lighting the fireworks, got it all under control. Is anyone ever watching the guy lighting the fireworks? No, but I think she was just in awe of my power that I had over the situation. I was, I was, I was in control. <laughs> Women are turned on by power, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Me with like, a box of swan vestas. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, I can. I can I'm feeling a little stroke. bit. I'm yeah, feeling a little yeah. bit sexy there myself. You go, now. There you go. Yeah. Picture that. And bear in mind, like, obviously, I've got football. I haven't got fireworks in my pocket. Why would you do that? No, that's keep crazy. Them, them I mean, if you did, you wouldn't be allowed to run the show, would you? No, of course it's not. It's one, of the first question. Idiot. Yeah. it's one of the first questions they ask. Yeah, exactly, mate. All right, good. Safety first, fun later. Um, <laughs> that's but, that's <laughs> what you said to her. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to, trying to roll it on. This is about you putting a condom on for the first time. Oh, dear. Oh, got it on my hand. So, um, Peace to Resistance was the fucking, the finale was some fucking firework called fucking the spunking rocket or something like that you know it was some fucking great big expensive one where are you getting your fireworks and, uh, mate anyway so i've strolled down like hold my beer mm-hmm. i'm gonna go and light this this one and i'm gonna close the show mm-hmm. so as i've lit it the, the 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 kind of the what do you call the thing that you like the um fuse fuse the fuse has burnt really quick like scary quick so i was like oh so I've kind of turned around and kind of obviously pushed off my right foot to try and get away from it because it's going to explode. Yeah. But I hadn't, I'd misjudged the situation because there was um, a four foot high um, steel rod stuck in cement, which they used to slide the um, washing line over. All right. As I've turned around and pushed off of my right foot, I've slammed my balls at, at, at full pack, like full wax straight into this iron rod, <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> Whilst this firework's going off about a foot from my head, all of my mates in hysterical laughter, mm. a kind of concerned new girlfriend, forward slash embarrassed, because I'm now covered in mud, laying on the floor, holding my fucking bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> whilst there's a firework going off in front of me and, and I'm still <laughs> holding a fire lighter in my hand. Yeah, so... Um, oh, mate, that's amazing. Yeah. You went from having control to bottom of the food chain. Yeah, that night. And it, it fucking hurt as well. It really hurt. I, I can't believe I can have kids. Um, <laughs> right. Um, have you ever had a DNA test on your kids? I think it's safe to say they do look quite a lot like me. <laughs> it's true, right. it's true. They, they do. God bless them. Um, going back to V Festival um, mm-hmm. for uh, for another one. Um, at V Festival at V97. Yeah. Um, in the afternoon, we was at stage two. It was a nice sunny day. Um, sitting on stage two, which is a slope, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm struggling. It is. It, well, it was. I've not okay. been for years. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, we take turns in like go and get a tray of beers, yeah. And uh, and we was watching. Uh, I can tell you, I was watching Hurricane Number One. Uh, nice, right? Okay. Andy yep. Bell from Ride. Yeah. Um. And yeah, we we was watching them at the bottom of the slope, quite near the front, very relaxed, no crowds as such. If I was just chilling there. Yeah. But if you turned around, as far as you I could see was people. Yeah. My turn to get around. I went. What are we doing? Like I said. Right, okay, brilliant. So as I've stood up, turned around to get a drink, my brother's pulled my trousers and pants down. Jeez. And gone. Hello! (laughs) (laughs) Buy a belt, man. For fuck's sake. Probably 15,000 people. There's no way. There's Uh, there's thousands of people we saw. Of course there was. Like, literally, they made the loudest fucking hello you could ever see. Literally, everyone turned around. And as soon as people turn around, they're all going, and I'm just standing there, my pencil out, just thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. Is it a pencil or is it an Argos pen? A betting pencil. That's what I thought. (laughs) Um, Oh, dude, that's fucking terrible, Yeah, I've just noticed most of these involve... Me and my own. It's, it's, it's like one to five, just people pulling your trousers down. Because after a while, I'm going to get the thought that you want people pulling no, your trousers no, there, down. There, there is, um, I'll, I'll break it up with a couple of uh, quick... Can I just uh, tell one about pulling trousers down? And that I did that to a mate of mine about four years ago. It's we, comedy gold. We, yeah, there's nothing better, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we went to... It was, I think it was Fort Park. Or was it Orton's house? Anyway, we were having a little joke around and that. And when uh, one of my mates, he likes to be in control, he likes to be organised and that, he, he decided to walk to the counter, this is at the start of the day, to do something with some tickets or whatever, you know, organiser type yeah. shit. But this, the counter, the window was so low, 
it was it was literally crotch level this window, and so I think this is Alton Towers actually. So maybe people know this. And I walked up behind him, and I only meant to pull his shorts down. And the the woman <laughs> hadn't even the woman was sat there at at dick level, right? and she hadn't even acknowledged him. Right at that point, she had her head down because I, I was watching, and I snuck up. He had no idea, and I thought just pull his just pull his shorts down, not his. <laughs> I pulled him, but everything came down. <laughs> 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 she just looked up and it's just some fucking dude. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a screening test. It's not like the NHS. Can you, you imagine that you're just doing that and then you just look up and it's like, it's like, like I'm standing there. I did feel there's a part of me you that feels slightly bad about yeah. that, but not uh, no way. I mean, the fun is just overwhelms the fact that that yeah. happened. Oh, so, so yeah, respect to your friends for doing that. A uh, couple of honourable mentions. Um, Adam, me with my wife, long. Um, she used to work in a shopping centre. Um, you know, in an opticians, and I used to sit outside on the bench, wait for it to finish work, pick her up. Um, sitting outside there one night um, and as you know I'm a and as you can see from the walls I'm a big big boxing fan um, I can see Frank Bruno walking past no and I just thought wow it's... and I didn't process anything and I've never met him in my life right and yeah. I just went Frank <laughs> <laughs> and he turned around and he went what <laughs> what? In a nice way. Yeah. Like, but like, you'd addressed him in a like I know you sort of way. Yeah. yeah. And and I think he wasn't sure if he knew me. Brilliant. Like and obviously he didn't, but I think he was just like he was like, yeah what? And I was like and I hadn't thought beyond Frank. And I went Nothing <laughs> And he went Alright and just walked off and I just thought, Oh for fuck's sake. Like, no, you think, how, how can, how, could you fuck that up anymore? Like, yeah, like your mate did with Nick no, Cave, no, but no. aside from that, but yeah. God, why didn't I just go, oh, hello, Frank, how you doing? Still training, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. No, Yeah, Frank. but, you know, it's a tough one, isn't it? What yeah. I respect about you, Shu, is you're not frightened of doing that. I'm quite, a lot of the time, I'm quite, weirdly, I'm quite yeah. reserved in those situations. I had, a, I had a weird thing about a year ago. I, 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 I was going out to the book club, and before, and I went in this like, little place to grab a coffee, and it was about... Half eight in the morning, and as I walked in there, like I walked in, literally held the door, and this fellow walked past, and then like we both just stood in the queue, and they were fanning around with some coffee machine, mm. and we were both just kind of doing that, and I just looked, and I thought, "Fuck, it's Alex Turner," hey, and like, what? like from Arctic Monkey, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, fucking hell!" and and I really wanted to go. Would you like your first album? And like, and I thought. No, I'm not going to. And like, and I, and I, I, and I had loads of things. Well, I didn't have loads of things I wanted to say to him, but I just thought you're one of the biggest rock stars in the UK. Like, I, I should. He's, a, I he's, should, he's probably my favourite lyricist of the UK. Um, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably I, should say Screed, but yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I didn't. I, I, I didn't say anything. And I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm just growing up. Maybe I don't just want to go. Oh, hello, you blah blah blah. Mm, I think yeah, but I think there's. I kind of respect that. Yeah. I mean, um, well, the thing was, he just was probably feeling as tired and pissed off as he's me. In a coffee shop, and, and he, he wants a little, coffee, he wants yeah. a livener. So he probably don't want me going. Oh, 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 talk about. Yeah. yeah, no, he's a bit of a dude. So yeah. Um, wow. Okay, so and um, Frank. <laughs> what? Uh, Nothing. So I'm also um, spent about two years of my life. Um, what a, number is this? Two. You got lost. You're just this, this isn't a confession now, mate. Not gonna no. be here all night. Um, yeah, no, no, I've got, a, I've just got a couple more. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, um, I was I was worked in as a window fitter uh, for a couple of years, and just used to do your standard <clears throat> kind of windows in a house. That was mm. it. But we got a job in North Essex. And this isn't was, the one where you touch up that old girl. No, is it? no, no. Right. Got cleared of that. No. Um, and we had to, uh, it was a politician that lived in North Essex in this massive house. And he had a conservatory. And, uh, and in his conservatory roof, 
normally people have like a kind of plastic thing, polycarbon, I think okay. it's called, yeah. uh, instead of glass. But this guy wanted these sheets of coffee-coloured glass that were probably five foot wide and maybe six foot long, eight foot long. They were like these huge sheets of double glazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I was affectionately known as Tall Lad. <laughs> tall lad. Well, I was the tall one that would. You're a tall, or you're you were tall. Oh, I, I was um long. Yeah. Okay. Catch you. Catch um, you. Yeah. So um, the thing was to drop these in to to lift these bits of glass in was mm. ridiculous, and someone had to sort of take the weight off of them that could mm. reach. Mm. So a few of lads have helped me in with it, and I'm now holding this sheet of glass that probably costs <laughs> mega amounts of can money. I, can I just say? I, does he send in someone pulling your trap? <laughs> yeah, of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding this piece of glass. They've all let go. And now I've got to hold it. <laughs> it costs a fortune. And I'm going to fucking... If, if I drop it... We're in God. trouble. They're pissing themselves and they've just pulled my trousers and pants down. And I can't do anything about it because I can't put this glass down. So I'm standing there and then they've just gone like, excuse me, can we have a cup of tea, please? <laughs> so she's come in to go, all right, lads, what is it? I can... And I'm standing there, like, with my hands <laughs> above my head holding this glass and my cock and balls just on <laughs> Jesus she was Christ, just, man. thankfully just come in and pissed herself laughing and like obviously oh, the, the, the boys were kind of pre-camera phones really otherwise oh, that would have been mate that would know. be brilliant there's that um, there's that uh, thing on Facebook uh, called On The Tools yeah yeah you do that would be that would be yeah. an absolute classic oh, yeah. couldn't it yeah, that would be absolutely. any 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 lads listening to this who work on in the, on, on the sites and what not yeah. oh, please do that and get Get video footage yeah. and get it up. You, that's a surefire yeah. hit. Oh, that do you is. know what? Any videos of anything you've done that's been embarrassing or embarrassing stories, fucking hell, like just tweet us, Facebook us, yeah, like you know. And and if you've got photos of anything like that, brilliant. Like, well, because we always, because you know, we, we people have heard plenty of our ones. You yeah. know, if anyone, yeah. I can't imagine. Anyone who's just going to say, oh, and this one time I ended up, and I woke up and I was, you know, sharing my wellies with a sheep or something like that. Right. But, but I mean, if people want to share those stories, you know, your embarrassing stories, then, you know, let us know. Yeah, yeah, get involved. Yeah, for shizzle. Um, it ain't necessarily number one, but um, I did have one that's very reminiscent of something that from a, one is a, fucking brilliant. a TV show. Yeah. Um, I had a friend when we was growing up that um, kind of moved to like, a posher, greener area yeah. to where we are, but not far. And he's he had horses and land, and uh, and his parents had a few quid. They bought him a motorbike. I was probably fourteen, yeah. and uh, and I think I'd lied to him and sort of said, "Yeah, growing up, like, I've always had bikes and stuff like that. I'd never ridden a motorbike in my life." Um, and. He was like, I'll oh, come over. And I was like, yeah, wicked. So like, a few of us went over there. He was like, yeah, we're going to go over Jamie's. And like, we're gonna, you know, he's got a motorbike, he had a go-kart, and he had all season oh, shit. Hell, and, like, and, and he had like air rifles. We'd go over his fields and just like shoot each other and like play like... Oh, like, having a, a mate like that like. is yeah, amazing, cool. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. And, uh, and so anyway, he's, he's kind of got the motorbike out and he was like bombing around his, like, his, his fields and that. And I was thinking, oh, you're fucking brilliant. I kept kind of, sort of trying to watch what he was doing because I thought, I've no idea how to ride a motorbike, but mm. I've told him I know exactly how to ride a motorbike. Um, Did a bit of a J from him. It, it was a complete us. J from the in between us, completely yeah. J. And uh, so he's come around, he was like, uh, Who's next? And I was like, Yeah, go on. And, uh, and I got on it, and I'd ridden like a little automatic push and go, like my mm. mates might have had some bit of shit that we used to ride around over the field. But this had gears and stuff, and I didn't know what the fuck no. I was doing with yeah. it. Um, but I've just literally just drove off and tried to go as fast as I can to try and impress everyone. And then 
the kind of barbed wire fence was getting closer, and I thought, oh, okay, right, I better pull the brakes now. Mm. But I think I, still have, I think I did have the accelerator down, but I think the thing I was pulling was a clutch, not a brake. <laughs> And then when I hit the brake, the back wheels just started going from side to side, side to side. And then and, someone pulled your pants down. And then, <laughs> yeah, then all my clothes fell off. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and then I just um, piled into um, a barbed wire fence. Oh, uh, no. And literally had barbed wire um, all over me, around my balls, around my head. <laughs> you didn't have it around your balls. I was tied up in... in barbed wire and oh, his mate. dad had to come out with his snips and snip, snip he cut and, you out and cut me out how, how hurt was wire. you pain I, scale to no things. no I weren't like hurt hurt I was just, obviously my pride was fucking yeah. dead because I'd given it the big one about mm. how I ride a motorbike and I just you fucked fucking his bike wanker. up like, uh, in a barbed wire fence but yeah oh I, that's embarrassing yeah, had, it was embarrassing I had a similar when I uh, we it was going to be a ski trip and I was about 14 and we were doing dry ski slopes as, as practice I picked it up pretty quickly. The martial arts training had helped somewhat. I didn't know you'd done that. There was a black belt a little bit around this time. And um, basically, I was picking it up and then I was getting towards the end of the slope and I thought, oh. By the way, by this point, there was a, there was a couple of girls at my school um, that I was absolutely head over heels besotted mm-hmm. by. And um, I was coming down this slope, and you have to do the snow snow plow to slow down, don't you? Because you know you're just starting out. And and I went to do the snow plow. I sort of had it. I started slowing down, and then I sort of hit a bump, and my my skis went parallel. Obviously, you speed up, and I just shot past uh, like uh, this girl. And I'd been getting on really well with her, Stu, as well on the way up there in the coach. <laughs> I couldn't believe my luck because everything I said just was. It was just working at that yeah, moment yeah, in time. Yeah. It was effortless. And I was thinking, I thought she was brilliant. I thought she was amazing. Yeah. And for her to laugh at me, I was like, oh, wow, this, this is really cool. It's yeah. going well. And then I shot past her, parallel legs, and I just fucking, they had a big wire fence at the end of it, and I just <laughs> fucking went, dush, into that. And like you were saying, my hands were tangled in it like that. <laughs> I felt like I was in a spider web, and I was just looking at her like, uh, uh, Hi! <laughs> It's embarrassing, man. My, uh, I'll take a fall in front of my mates any day before like yeah. a girl that like, I'm crushing on. Definitely. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a shout out to um my old guitarist uh, John Bennett, who's one of the funniest people I know, and he will make an incredible guest on here one day. He's got some fucking insane stories. Um, one of my favourites was um John's quite short, and uh, when he was kind of young, he was he was like a sort of kind of tubby kid, and I felt that pain. I was there, mm. and uh, still there. And he, uh, nameless. Um, he, uh, <laughs> he, uh, yeah. He, he went swimming with the school in the secondary school, and and uh, and he said <laughs> afterwards, when everyone was getting changed, someone had hid his pants, <laughs> uh, and kind of standard schoolboy shit. Mm. Uh, <laughs> then it turns out they'd thrown him on the top of the lockers. Oh, and so he's got his towel around his waist looking for his pants. And in the end, someone's gone, oh, it's on top of that locker. So he's undone one of the locker doors, sort of put his foot in the locker, climbed up to get it, has slipped. And as he's come down, oh, no. he's caught his balls on the locker door. And literally oh, fucking mate. ripped his nutsack. And, uh, and then he just said, oh, I remember he's literally like being wheeled into the back of an ambulance in a wheelchair with like my fucking all wrapped up in bandages while like the rest of the school kids were getting on the coach oh, just giving it the, hey, all right, John. But, yeah, just what a it. poor bastard. Yeah. That, that has also reminded me of a, another embarrassing, I didn't think I had any embarrassing moments. Bullshit. At uh, school, we went to... Um, this sort of like adventure place where you could do um, wall climbing outside, um, kayaking. Loads of, you stayed overnight, so you camped and cooked. But one day we went on, I think they're called toppers or something. It's, it's like a little tiny little boat, okay? Right. And it's two man boats, these things, so they're tiny. And they were doing balancing. And I was being a cocky prick, to be honest with you. And I was. Um, oh, I just mean that. Because. 
because of my martial arts training, I got oh, a really good... Oh, you was like the karate kid on that yeah, boat, weren't you? Yeah, good balance. Yeah. And they couldn't... Like, this guy was going around seeing how, how long people could stay on, and I wasn't coming off this thing. For, basically, we were staying on the boats, and he was, like, testing us to see how long, how, what our balance was like. Yeah. And in the end, I was the last man staying, and I was feeling really proud of myself, and he was shaking this fucking thing. And in the end, he, he got me off. He pushed it, and I went, and I fell, and I'm a dickhead, because I, I know nothing, I know zero about boats and the rudder the under the, like the kill hall rudder that normally goes down like this on these little schooners or whatever they're called was just up like that and it's just a plastic basically a plastic blade and I went akimbo just straight over that <laughs> I'm not even kidding and it was painful but I fucking god knows how it it didn't you know yeah. sever my nuts into pieces and I remember just it was painful I remember just floating underwater for like about 10 seconds just to get my shit together and then come back to the top and there was people looking concerned and then obviously my mate's like yeah he told me the, he also told me a great story ever about um because we've had lots of requests for us to do top five drunken antics mm. um but he, he had a drunk uh story which was fucking brilliant where um his friend had got on the, the last train home pissed out of his head from london back to essex um and i bought a bargain bucket uh to eat and uh, and had sat on the train with his bargain bucket, literally cuddling it, <laughs> and uh, preparing to get off at, at Benfleet or something to, to eat <laughs> his chicken. This, one, this is good. And uh, literally <laughs> fell asleep on the on the train. Um, gets to Benfleet, gets off, walks home, takes the lid off. It's just full of bones. The fact that they peeled the lid off, <laughs> eh. All of his fucking chicken, put the bones back and then put the lid back on while he was asleep. He's fucking oh, inspiring. Yeah. That's, uh, you've got balls of steel as well to do that. That's, mm. uh, that's a bit like the game Operation. Yeah. Or Kaplunk. Yeah. Or Kaplunk. One wrong move and it's like all going to fucking come down on chicken you. Chicken wings. Yeah. Which is better. Yeah. That Vomit Comet, that train ride home, there's countless stories on that. We could yeah. do a top five on that another day. Yeah. It's brilliant. C to C, respect for that. That like You know, Thursdays and Friday nights from about... Even half nine onwards, you get on that train and people, you, you're you not going to be able to get your own time because Essex folk are quite friendly when they're drunk. No, they're not. And they're gonna, you're going to get some crazy stories. Oh, I've had all sorts of weird. Yeah. My, my mate, um, whenever he gets on that train, um, he'll always go, um, hiya, can I have um, a, a black coffee, please? Yeah. Uh, do you want sugar in that? You always the sugar. And, and he will put like 20 tablespoons of sugar <laughs> in his coffee. <laughs> So it's like a fucking boiling syrup. So the minute he gets some egg, he's just like, bosh. Really? <laughs> yeah. He just says, it's going to give me a good four seconds of running away. Bloody so hell. Like, uh, yeah, that's a... Yeah. Little tip for you there, kids. Scary. Uh, yeah. Um, Any right. more? No, that's it. that's it. That's it. That's, I mean, there's, I've been embarrassed a lot more. I'm you know, glad. Um, I'm really glad you felt, um, you know, safe. And comfortable in this space to share those stories yeah, with us, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I cannot wait to pull your trousers and pants down at some point. That is okay. going to be brilliant. Mm, that's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking in a jokey way, just me and you. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, sure, own. sure. Yeah, sure. That'd, be, that'd be sexy. Okay. Oh, nice one, man. Yeah. Superb. Right. So what, what's your next list? Um, so mine is top five opening tracks on albums. All I, right. Who, who, who picked that? Can we have a little look? Do you know who it was? I mean, I've done this in my research um, obviously you haven't so um, I think that was Tom Smith okay there you go thank you Tom I'm surprised I bet you'd like doing this one yeah but um, I bet yours are rubbish cool you did say that about twins though right yeah yeah okay just Come remember that blow, blow my mind Mr. blow Potato my mind head. Dr. Feelgood's top five opening tracks on albums. Chris Glasson's top five <laughs> opening tracks on albums. Chris Passion has pit made me pick up a fucking pizza under that name the other day. <laughs> so brilliant. And I knew one of the motherfuckers in the Pizza Hut. And he had his <laughs> head Passion. He had his head down and he was on the phone taking an order. And I'm not sure if it was embarrassment from him that he didn't want to look at me yeah. and then realising that he's put Chris Passion, not Glasson, <laughs> on his own order. <laughs> Oh, and inspired. I didn't really want, and I didn't really want that conversation either. Oh no, no! Yeah. Honestly, it was uh, it was me, mate. He's a joker. If you become a stripper, that's so your name, Chris Passion. Yeah, mm, I'm. I'm not planning. No, but I'm just saying. Never say never. No, no. Top five opening tracks on albums. So I spent like an hour and a half on this. Okay. 
No, that's, I'm I lying. That's a lie. It's a lie. An hour I spent okay. on this. Right. I, I bet um, that's a bit of a lie as no, well. No, no, no. It was an hour. But okay. I, I feel that you really, to really do this, it take it take it take half a day. Um. So okay. So there's loads of honourable mentions. I'll do that last. So, um, number five, everything it's right pace. Kid A, Radiohead. Good show. I just love that song. Uh-huh. Um. There's loads of dope Radiohead songs out there, but that was kind of this was kind of different. I think when they released that record. Yeah, I agree. Um. Yeah, and you know, I still listen to that song regularly now, yeah. to the point where you know I don't listen to as much of Kid A. And I guess when I thought about this, I did think that like, are there opening tracks that almost dwarf the rest of the record? Sometimes, um, not not for anyone else, but for me, I think that did that for me. I've listened to that song, yeah, twice as many as anything else on Kid A. Yeah, um, it was in that movie which I really liked, which was. Um, Vanilla, Vanilla Sky. Yeah. Um, Tom Cruise. Yeah, Tom Cruise. I like. I like that movie. Yeah, it's all right. it was, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's kind of melancholic and a bit bittersweet that movie. Yep. But I, yeah, it was cool and everything in its right pace featured in that. And I think that was a, a, a wicked sort of like a, it fit the tone of the movie. So that's number five. No crazy or funny and uh, uh, anecdotes about that. Yep. Number four is Bomb Track. By Rage Against Machine. Is that the opener? Yeah. Is that the opener Hey yo, it's just the nerve bomb track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that's how that record starts. That's a good shout, that. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the best records of all time. That. And it's not. There's. Um. I. I say that almost like everyone should accept that, but I almost feel like that's the case. The album or that track. No, the record, the whole album. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't know, Rage Against Machine blew me away. It was really my introdu- introduction into that sort of genre. Um, and Bomb Track sort of like just that simple bass lead up to what was just such a heavy record was yeah, just, no, I they, fucking loved it. Not, maybe no, it's no way, it's not even in my top, weirdly, it's not even, unlike everything in its right place, it's not even in my top three on that record. Yeah. And yet, I just felt that that lead into it is just so like. Start mm. with bass lines, I don't know. Bullet in the head starts yeah. with bass lines. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, for sure they do. Um, but it's uh, doesn't start the record, no. so um, yeah. Hence why, <laughs> hence why I went On with Bondrick. Third album. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's third? So you've got um, what was what number was Evil Empire and what was that was that before so that was two wasn't it two right sorry, and then what was, was the album with Sleep Now in the Fire oh on? yeah that was um, Battle for Los Angeles does that open that album I don't know if it did that's a fucking yeah it is a fucking shit yeah, yeah, that's my yeah, favourite yeah. race track that yeah it is, oh. it's beautiful I, it's weird isn't it you hear songs and they remind, ever remind you of certain play- I remember listening to that song walking through Birmingham City Centre and just being hyped by it, just absolutely loving that yeah. record. So yes, bomb track for me. Um, and as I say, it's weird. It's weird that it. A lot of the other ones on this, they that as I say, they outshine the rest of the tunes. Yeah. They don't like. For example, uh, "Know Your Enemies" probably oh, might sure. be my favourite um, yeah. Rage song. Um, you know, but then you've got "Killing in the Name," which is obviously got one of the best endings of any song ever. Yeah. And um, we were rocking out to that actually. Uh, it was that me and you driving back somewhere not that long ago. My yeah, 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 yeah. It was in my motor. Um, what other songs? Wake up as well. Yeah. Oh, it's just loads. That, that that album. Like, I was lucky enough to be probably nineteen, eighteen, nineteen when that came out, mm. and caught it in the clubs. And like, I, I remember the first time I heard it was at the Gas Club in Leicester Square, and I think it was either played by. A very very young Errol Alkin or Jeff Automatic, no, no, one really? of them too. Yeah, and I remember going and getting a um, getting a, a, a copy of it from a record store the next day, and thinking, I can't wait to play this at, at the toothbrush. This is this is fucking insane. I'm like kidding the name, and and every Friday it still gets played, and it still gets the same reaction. Like there was a point when the owners of the club were like. You gotta stop playing that fuck you record, and it's like why? It's because it's going off. Like it was getting people so aggressive 
and he, he, he's a it's an aggressive tune. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it, and it is a it fires people up. You know, it's, it's, and, it's, it's brilliant for that. And yeah. anger is a gift. I think yeah, was yeah, one yeah. of those Zach De uh, lines. And yeah. and but it. it I mean, yeah, God, it's what they're titled. It's self fulfilling, but yeah. they really are. Like they, they, they absolutely nailed it with that record. You yeah. do that does open you up and make you just want to screw your face up and rock. Like yeah. you know, there's a, there's a, there's, there's meaning to it as well. It's not just like, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, some of the other boys, ones that are quite self destructive and yeah. whatnot. It's, 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 it's wicked music and done by talented guys. And I always remember reading on the inside of the sleeve, it's saying. Uh, none of this was done with like um, After Effects. All the all all the sounds that you can hear, we play live, and a lot of that is Tom Morello doing yeah. funny things on his guitar yeah. and whatnot. But yeah, for me, Bomb Track it is all, it's a Pav, it's Pavlov's dog because I hear the start of Pom, Bomb Track, and that is like a ringing of saying this this is the start to the one of the best albums of your life, um, awesome. energetically. So yeah, um, so number three is kind of kind of a strange one really um it's not i love it but it has to go on here because i've listened to it so much and weirdly i was talking about it on twitter this week and it's blue tones and it's off their second record and the start of that is um i, 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 I always never bothered remembering that the name of this song I, but i've listened to it so many times but it's it's tone blues and it's just a little instrumental that's quite haunting and rhythmic yep. and then it leads into um unpainted arizona yeah but I remember being like 18 and um, having that on whatever whatever format I was listening to. It wouldn't have been Walkman by then. I think I might have had an MP3 by that point. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I was on holiday in Tenerife and I was just playing that intro and, and that first song. Actually, the whole record. But it, that intro you used to paint a picture in my mind all the time of a, of a movie. Yeah. And I spent that Tenerife, like in the summer when I was just sat around by the pool and that, I'd listen to that whole record, um, Return to the Last Chance Saloon, and I'd write a movie in my head. And like the, the whole movie was written to, it started with um, Tone Blues and ended with the last song. So the yeah. movie I'd written in my head was based on the picture that the, the Blue Tones have written. That's pretty cool. So yeah, man, it was, it's a banger. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not one that m many people will um, yeah. obviously relate to, but well, that's not what top fives are about, right? We, we spoke to um, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, this week, the, um, who was uh, who is the singer um, in the Blue Tones? Yeah. They just um, re they just they just said on Twitter he re-released that recently yeah. as well. Um, and I've done some some bits and pieces with Mark over the years, and he's he's lovely and he's really interesting. And um, yeah, we've 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 kind of hit him up and said, Mark, come on and, and be a guest. We'd like to have you come to the yeah, top man. That that for me is a big. That's and he was big. like, yeah, well up for it. So, Mark, if you're listening watching come on let's get this sorted um yeah yeah for sure good little band of blue right. tones very much so number two this this one everyone knows but this again this happens to be one that does for me over like I, i've heard these songs like a billion times and the rest of the record not that much wanna be? um huh wanna be <laughs> i don't know if that started that record I don't know. So I'll tell you what, I don't think, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Barrow Riley, The Who. Didn't see that coming. Oh, mate, that kills me, that record. It's perfect. It's effectively a perfect song. It is, in, in, as far as I'm concerned. That is the highlight of going to watch UFC. Yeah. When the prelim card finishes before the main card starts, yeah. around the whole of the O2, kind of blacks out, and then all the screens come on, and the beginning of Barbara Riley kicks in, and then the minute chills. <laughs> it is, and the minute it's a it bow, is. bow, uh, bow. You start getting. Oh, it gets me so pumped up. You start seeing the knockouts. Oh, and, like, dude. and then the minute the the, the the drums kick in, you just hear the roar of the crowd, like, and it, it's. My mate went for the first time a little while ago, and I was like, just, just whatever you do, don't go and get a beer in between the prelims mm. and the main card because, the Barbara Riley bit mm. like montage is fucking amazing oh, it's mind blowing mate and um, I, I, rubbing salt in the wound when me and Pip went the other week um, they changed the edit of it and me being a bit of a moany cunt I was sort of like oh this isn't exactly the same it's 
better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was like, oh my god, I started off a bit like, oh, it's not the same. And then like how they've edited it yeah. was even better than Did last time. Did you ever time. hear the remix by Sebastian? Was it? Oh, I don't know, but I like Sebastian. That's that's interesting. Around that time, right? Um, of all the what was the label that was doing I don't know all the, what he was the on. stuff then? Uh, yeah, not right. DFA. No, it was. Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah, but. Um, I'm sure it was Sebastian done a remix of uh, uh, of that. Uh, um, Boys Noise yeah, yeah. was yeah. the label thing. I was oh, was it on Boys Noise? Was it? Oh, oh right. Uh, okay. I might be wrong, but um, yeah, that was all right. That's a big tune. There's a. I think it must be the. I don't know if they put videos out for songs then, but there is a really brilliant video where. Um, uh, Tanzen's got like I think he's got like dungarees on or something. And he's he's just marching, and then as soon as he obviously he's winding the arm up for the down down down, and when the drums kick in, he just does this crazy little jump in the air. He's just um, Daltrey's just looking like a proper rock god at that point as well. It's a fucking powerful record that. Like, he's yeah, brilliant. The li- the lyrics you can read into. I've never looked into yeah. what what that song's about. You know, I like sometimes researching yeah. things, and sometimes it's nice to have that mystery because you yeah. interpret how you want in lyrics, don't yeah. you? Yeah. That is, uh, you, you read into that how well I've read into that to how 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 I want, and yeah. and and they're some of the most inspiring lyrics ever, and yeah. and the com the composition of that song is is just flawless. Not yeah. the execution of it's flawless, and I thought behind how, how they comp yeah. they composed it is brilliant, and the end when it goes into that violin, yeah, that and then it just goes like round, it goes round. It? Like, it's yeah. it's amazing to me. Like you know, uh, hip hop was born. You know, obviously, Cool Herc would play like the. Uh, the breaks in certain records, right? Yeah. Certain soul records and whatnot. But for me, like you could, as a rock, if you were to be a rock DJ, that would be the sort of break I would yeah, be yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just fucking, it's almost like the chain, um, you know, you, the, the break in that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mate, it's perfect to me uh, every time. So nice. yeah, that, 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 that yeah, blows me wouldn't away. Wouldn't have had that one, wouldn't not have seen that coming. Uh. Yeah. Long old song. I like a long song. And that is number one. So uh, this is uh, Timeless by Goldie. But this is broken down into like three parts. It's 21 minutes long. And I think that, you know, at my funeral, <laughs> I'm going to request for that song just to troll everyone because they'll have to sit there for 21 for minutes, 21 minutes listening yeah. to all three sections of it. Nice. But um, the reason why this is number one is this was really at the point where I started developing my own musical taste as opposed to what you what you're hearing around yeah, yeah, you by yeah, your yeah. family you went looking for stuff and and yeah. whatnot and the start of timeless i mean it is that it is it's it is that it is it, it always again a bit like um the blue tones it, it can't help but cast a, a story in my head but every time i can go back to that i can conjure i can conjure a whole new movie or story to that just by listening to it it just sounds so futuristic, the start of uh, uh, Inner City Life. Um, it's a tune that is. It's, I don't know, Matt. I don't know what else to say. It's difficult to quantify it because it's, there's no real lyrics in it. It's well, just we, um... synthesised and it's so um, atmospheric and f- futuristic. But I just, please, guys, well, we'll if you're up, listening we'll, to we'll, this, we'll you've up, got uh, to listen to that. You've got we'll to put, put another Spotify playlist up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope it's on Spotify. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it it actually is. It yeah. is. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, just, um, just uh, search Hardcore Listing in uh, in Spotify yeah. and you can, yeah, you can check out our musical choices from a lot of our guests um, yeah. so far. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's great. Plenty more to come. And that Goldie record, I remember getting that and... Um, some of my older, like my brother, like Jamie's brother and some of his mates were like, why the fuck has he got Goldie? And because uh, I didn't really, I'd sort of like got a bit lucky with it. I hadn't been reading any like press or anything about it. And um, yeah, and I remember just thinking, fucking hell, music is quite a, a crazy thing. It's unit, it, you know, it brings yeah. people together to listen to it. And that sort of dictated, that was the start, you know, it was a bit of a landmark that was for Goldie and drum and bass, you know. And although that is an amazing start to the record, again, it's it might not be my favourite record on that track, you know. Mm. Sea of Tears, I think again, 
is one that I can listen to. It's got energy in it, but you can me- you can fucking meditate to it. I can sleep to it. I can dance to it. I've, that record, timeless to me, is uh, it, 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 it's, it's part of my character. That, yeah, that yeah, record, yeah. but at the same time, um, you know, I recommend anyone listen to that. Oh. Honorable mentions: Smells oh. like Teen Spirit. Standard. Um, Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style intro, which is yeah. fucking amazing. Not just the bit where he's in the bath with the with the with the girl, but um, it's like there's a verse, there's an intro. And it's only about one minute thirty, and Lady of Rage is on that. And she just fucking, she just tears it up. Her verse in that is just insane. Mars Volta, um, off um, their first record, um, Inertiatic EP, ESP. I thought that was amazing. Highway to Hell, ACDC. Mm, don't like them. Arctic Monkeys, do I want to know? Um, and uh, Queens of Stone Age, Millionaire. So, oh, Johnny Cash, Man Comes Around. It's probably my favourite Johnny Cash record. Um, a few Chemical Brothers ones. And shit, I forgot to say... I nearly put this at number one and I didn't end up putting it in, in any other spot. But um, we spoke about them earlier um, and that was Prodigy and that was um, the intro and then it goes into Break and Enter, which was on Jilted Generation. Mm-hmm. And to me, that fucking, that just gets me up for it. A bit like Bomb Track. Um, I just want to fucking go for it as soon as I hear yeah. that. And that was kind of the intro to that record, Jilted, is when uh, they have a sample, and Liam sampled it. It says, um, you know, I've decided to take my music back underground to stop it falling into the wrong hands. Mm-hmm. And that was because Prodigy released Experience, which is just it's just insane, yep. right? It's, it's one of the best records ever, um, especially from that genre anyway, and especially to me. But he got a bit of flack, and people were like, "Oh, you made, you're made you bringing a rave scene overground. It was underground, and you're bringing it into the mainstream." And I just think, "Oh, fuck off, mate!" Like, if if you're writing music that is so good that it it shines a spotlight on that genre, yeah, yeah. If that kills off the genre, well, fuck it then. And um, and I think Jilted was such a different record, really, to experience. And it starts with that little like little sample. And it goes into break and enter, which is not like experience yeah. really. It's very heavy. Yeah, it changed. That was a big transition now, wasn't it? Yeah. And when that drops, I, I, man, I, yeah. there's not there's not many things that get me gassed like that fucking record does. Yeah. It had poison on there. It's the same thing. I bump, I bump these their songs. Laws on I, that, isn't it? Yeah, their laws. The one after break yeah. and enter. And their laws fucking mind boggling. Yeah. It is it, that record that, uh, for that's me. That's got pop lead itself on it, hasn't it? Pop lead itself. Yeah. Clean it just, mm. That's it, man. That's crazy, isn't it? Mm. I, uh, mm. t- to me, that record Jil- Jilted is another one like Timeless that, yeah. that defines me in terms of what I started to listen yeah. to and what I got into. Voodoo it. People's on that, isn't it? Voodoo People. Voodoo People, and then another one that I think I don't know if they're sick of it now. But um, no good start to dance. Fucking shit. Right, I tell you what, mate. Right, I played that at Mike Asylums. Um, I played that at his wedding. Oh, it was fucking. It was insane when I played that. I mean, the whole wedding. There was like I don't know, three hundred people there dancing to no good start to dance. All my prodigy stuff's on vinyl. <laughs> Woo! And it's, and it's, yeah. It's full of battle scars because it's been in the DJ box for years. Yeah, fucking right. Today, <laughs> yeah, turned up at work in my. Um, from Amazon was Duty Generation, Fat of the Land. That fucking front cover. And Dirt Chambers. Yeah, Wicked. That is and, amazing. Uh, yeah, I've not listened to that yet, but um, yeah, it's they dope, turned up mate. today. It's dope. Um, just because I was, I ended up watching them doing Poison at Glastonbury a couple of years ago, and it still just sounded so fucking good. Yeah. And I just thought, do you know what? Like, my vinyls are probably fucked because obviously if you're a DJ, especially in alternative kind of music as well, or it doesn't matter with a prodigy, does it? What sort of music, you know, you DJ at, like, they're going to get you out of trouble. Like, you drop prodigy, goes off. Just whatever. I've never like, done a mega mix of prodigy. You're right, it always does. And I've yeah. always wanted to do maybe just a prodigy mega mix set. It's a really nice... I just feel uh, like it's a bit naughty to do The little breakdown in, in Smack Your Bitch Up with mm-hmm. a... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can mix so much yeah, into there. Yeah. One of my DJs always drops a whole lot of love in at yeah. that point. <laughs> yeah, like, that's that, really... Wah, 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 da na na Like, just yeah. it, that works quite nice. Yeah, that, that sounds like that would be dope, mate. Yeah, but... Cool. So I would say, in fairness, 
because of that, yeah, as I say, Prodigy was wrestling with Timeless for me. They almost share that top spot. So, yeah, that's that. Nice. Yeah, man. Have you got any, uh, any, in- what, what ones would you go for? Um, just definitely maybe start with Rock and Roll Star. Oh, mate, I don't know. It, it it's, a, it's a pretty epic record, but I, I genuinely haven't gone back and listened to Definitely Maybe for 10 years. I was obsessed with it for year, for a while. But I think they're all right, but I think that's a... Fu- if that is the opener... Can you have a look? Sure if that can. is the opener, that's a fucking... Mm. That's a great way to start yeah, an album. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would go What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Um, yeah. I would probably say, wouldn't it be nice, um, Pet Sands, Beach Boys? Nice. Um, Fuck. Uh, I think Debaser might even. Debaser, it is. Start it is the starter. The it does. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a that was a consideration actually. Yeah. Um, God. Yeah, I don't know really. I, um, Rock and roll star was. The I want to be adored the, by yeah, Stone Roses. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a great way to start a record. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a shame, isn't it, that these discussions that we're having about what's the best way to start an album yeah. isn't going to exist really anymore because people don't generally, as we've banged yeah. on about yeah, enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. buy an Consumer album habits. to an album yeah, 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 in yeah, its yeah. entirety as it's but excuse me, meant to be heard. It's yeah. meant to be, you know, but nowadays they just go and cherry pick the tracks they've heard half the time. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's a shame. You're it might come back round. We don't know. Things, well, we, we things, do, things happen in pick, picks and troughs, don't they? So you might, it might, it might cycle back round. I hope this resurgence in vinyl isn't just a little kind of hipster thing that <clears throat> isn't going to carry on. But, you know, it is nice to go in your high street chain music shops and there's vinyl in there. Rather than computer games and T-shirts and shit books, like mm. you know, you, you you can go in there and leaf through vinyl. Like that feeling of doing that in HMV, I ain't done that for years. It's nice. When when you buy the, the thing is our relationship with technology now is that it's not, you know, we we were born to have we've got a multitude of senses and 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 flat screens don't enable you to engage with things in the same way you do things in reality so with records you get to pick it up there's, there's a smell that comes off it do you see what i mean you yeah, can get yeah, to feel yeah. it there's a weight to it you know there's a motion to it when it's on that record you know and it actually takes longer like it's okay not to be rushing around like the yeah. i guess as much as it's great to have access to That's things quickly show. i've noticed with and we've said this before but here's another way of looking at this i've noticed sometimes with movies i might sit down and i've got my phone now and all of a sudden, I'm like, I find my hands going to look at it. Never did that 10 years ago. And yet that might spoil a, mov- a movie for me if I suddenly somehow start getting distracted by it. And and the same with Spotify, you can skip and play. When you get a record and you put that on a deck, th- there's more effort that goes into that. And why you, sort of, you, you engage more into it. There's Absolutely. more of a story. And why that's playing, you've generally, well, I would have always had the sleeve in my hand. Yeah, and so I'm like thinking, oh, right, that's nice. Like, who wrote that? And you know, just just reading into who produced it, and, and being a bit of a nerd for it. But what when you've got that in your hand and you're listening to that, what you've not got is a whole stream of stuff down the side of a flat screen going, "Hey, you might like this," which mm. as its benefits, it can turn you on to new music, mm. but it is a distraction mm. from consuming. Art as you, I know that sounds wanky, but to consume the art as it's meant to be consumed, which yeah, as a body of work, definitely, and, and and that lack of discovery is a big yeah, part of that. Like yeah. it's, it's exciting when you get that. It yeah. was exciting when I but had timeless, and I was like, that, "Fuck!" And I was looking for all the amazing artwork that Goldie, like as a graph designer, had done. Like it's like a gra- graph artist. You you know when you get that on Spotify, there's no discovery, and someone's telling you. On Facebook, oh, have you checked but, but, out? Right, have you got it? Is that, that is it, and it, and it is. That there's no chase. Mm. It's like it, you haven't got to go and search for something. So when you find it, you cherish it, and you feel it's your own because you've 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 you know you found it. Yeah, it's like you know when you know, growing up, we'd go and watch a band, and we'd see a support act, and it was like oh, they're really good, weren't they? Yeah, 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 wicked. Like, and you had that 
let's go and watch them again. Let's go and like, you mm. know, you buy their record and I, I, I drop it in the club and people are, no, you know, it wouldn't do a lot, mm. but that almost reimbursed the thing that it's like, this is mine. Do you mm, know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're like, this is something that I've found and it's yeah. dear to me. But I think nowadays with that whole kind of Spotify, YouTube, and it's all good, you know, that it's there, but it's just, it's too easy. There's a trade-off. There, yeah, exactly. And, and that's like with technology, there's this trade-off yeah. that we've got. And if we don't learn, and it's not just about music, and it's not just about Instagram or Facebook, but if we don't learn how to balance our relationship with it better, and maybe I'm just talking for myself, but that has been tilting in the wrong way, yeah. then I'm going to lose track of what, 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 what actually is actually life and important you yeah know? so definitely mate definitely interesting didn't think we'd go down that road today didn't think we'd whinge about <laughs> no <laughs> track orders but that See, was really been, cool been, mate it's been quite grown up hasn't it oh no Mostly. I've actually spoke about me having my knob exposed yeah. probably five embarrassing stories of people pulling my trousers down yeah um yeah. <laughs> amazing yeah, great. Well, um, shall we call it a day then? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck me. Only two hours. Only two hours. That's amazing that we've not just yeah. whittered on and on and on for fucking hours. Yeah. Like, yeah, literally pulling well, each well done, other. Well done, mate. Up. I'm impressed. So, uh, Get that away. Oh, you got me right, <laughs> you massive bell. Um, yeah. All right. Well, um, Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, and thank you very much for filming this, Brad, as well. Much appreciated. And, and thank you very much if you're watching. This is all new. Um, yeah. Quite like it. We, we, oh, if you're just listening, we're looking at the cameras now, kind of yeah. pulling like a kind of confused face like we've just seen the future. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a, I've never seen you pull that face before. <laughs> that's my <laughs> Um yeah, all right, well, look, um, thanks loads, and um, please uh, go on to iTunes and subscribe. Give us five stars, but then just say really stupid shit about us. We encourage you to go on to iTunes and the reviews thing and just say really fucking stupid stuff about us. Um, by all means, say that, oh, I don't know. Well, surprise. Make up something crazy on the spot, you crazy kid. Go yeah. on, go. Um, say um, you was there... Um, the night um, in Benidorm in uh, 2001 <laughs> when uh, Chris was um, arrested um, for making love to a donkey whilst dressed as a matador. Um, you, was, you, was you there for that? Or? Yeah, I was filming. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, cool, yeah, cool, yeah, cool. Standard, yeah. Standard, standard. Yeah. Um, yeah, no donkey sex, just... Um, Leave, leave, just say some shit about I, us. I once put my willy in the exhaust pipe of a <laughs> motorcycle. <laughs> Should we leave it on that? <laughs> it's a true story. We'll tell that another time. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye. <laughs> that happened. That that's the thing. That was the thing that happened.